Sports has been in my life pretty much since birth. I grew up playing soccer. I started at the age of four. I was able to take my first steps onto a soccer field, and I took my last steps onto a soccer field. I got recruited to play soccer at Metro State College of Denver back in 2008, and I was a starter my freshman year. I ended up getting first team All-American my sophomore year, and we had a game one night, and I woke up that morning and my legs had felt numb and tingly, but I figured, oh, you know, we just finished two-a-days. I'm probably just a little bit fatigued and I was running for the ball and then all of a sudden it just felt like this excruciating pain in the back, in my back. It felt like what I would assume like getting stabbed felt like. I fell onto the ground and when I got to the hospital they ran tests and I did an MRI and that's when I found out that I had a blood clot burst in my spinal cord which caused me to become paralyzed from the belly button down and I was considered a paraplegic at the level of T8, T9. So my sister Caitlin was a huge influencer in my life and really great support system, um, even to the day when I, was, when I came out of the closet with her. I remember this day very vividly. I had just gotten home from school and she ended up handing me a letter. And I opened it up and I started reading it and instantly, before I even got all the way through it, I was like, wait, my sister's a lesbian too. She's coming out to me before I even have to say anything. This is crazy, this is incredible. And I started tearing up because of pure just joy and excitement. But I remember once I started crying, she looked at me and started getting really nervous because she thought, oh, these are tears of like disappointment. Like what's going on? And then I turned to her and I, we locked eyes and I was like, I'm gay too. At the time of my injury, my sister was living in Washington, D.C., and she had a full-time job and was doing really well for herself. Once I completed my rehab stay, that's when she realized that I still needed some more help, and she actually quit her job in D.C., moved to Denver, and helped me. And the fact that she was so willing to do that was, I guess, in a way, like such a humbling experience to see how much love and support I had from her. I remember... My first practice, my sister was gonna join me because I was nervous, I didn't know what to expect. And I remember telling my sister like, it's wheelchair basketball, like this is gonna be ridiculous. I don't even wanna do this. We got there and I remember rolling into the gym and the first thing I see is somebody just get flipped out of their wheelchair and fall to the ground. And then instantly I look at my sister and she looks at me and she's like, this is for you. This is totally for you and I was like, you're right, you're right, I need this in my life. And I got, got my first wheelchair basketball chair, and that was it for me. That was it, game over. My identity of an athlete had, had arrived. And with wheelchair basketball, you know, people see disability and they think, oh, she's so fragile. The poor thing, look at her push her chair, she's such an inspiration. So it's really frustrating that I have such a strong, like, relationship with being a lesbian and being proud, but it's sometimes kind of hidden because of the disability and pushed aside, even though I want that to be out. I want to be proud, but it's so hard when everybody just sees the chair. Yes, I am disabled. Yes, I am a lesbian, but I can still compete and be successful in society regardless of what other people have thought in regards to LGBT community. I want to be an inspiration because you see me on the court doing some crazy tricks and tilting in a chair, doing all this stuff that you wouldn't expect. That's what I love about wheelchair basketball is we get the opportunity to change perceptions and change ideas of what disability should look like. We aren't fragile. We are competitors and we're, we're ready to prove that.